I'm going to walk you through building uh, a first your first Delphi application. Okay. All right. So uh, we're not going to focus so much on learning how to program. Is just kind of learning our way around the IDE as we're building a program together. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start here by saying create new multi-device application in Delphi. Oh yeah. Uh, other IDEs may or may not have this one on here if you're not using uh, if you're using just Delphi versus Rad Studio. This is Rad Studio, so it has both languages in it. Okay. All right. And the starter edition is not going to have all of these options, but either way, we're always going to use blank application for this one. All right. Um, so whether or not you have other options or not, it's not too big a deal. Okay. So on here, this is our design surface or our canvas or our form. Okay. And so what this represents, this represents a window that's going to run on our target operating system. Okay. So this is like the, this is, we're looking at the end result here. Yes, exactly. So if I hit run right now. We have an empty form. Okay. Not very interesting. Mm -hmm. But we can easily put down a button. Um, so I'm gonna come here to the tool palette. The tool palette's where you pull all the components you're gonna use in your development. Okay. And you can search it, you can scroll through it and they're categorized. I have a lot of them here, you see. Or you can search them. So if I just want a button, I'll just type button. And we see we have radio buttons, regular buttons, speed buttons, Corner buttons, color buttons, and all sorts of other types of buttons here. That's a lot of buttons. <laughs> That's a lot of buttons. <laughs> I didn't realize we had that many buttons, actually. Um, so I'm just going to use a regular button for now and just drop that on the form. So I can also expand out standard and find, see there's a button there, and the checkbox and the radio button are also available that way as well. All right. Now, if I just run this again, you see now we have a button. Yeah. And as I move over it, it highlights, and I can click on it, and we can see it kind of does that depression so that's behavior. like a uh, an inherent property of the button yeah exactly the button okay. that's stuff the button knows how to do automatically all right um but we can also change the button around a little bit i can drag these little things here and resize the button i can come here to this object inspector i'll make this bigger here and uh, make some changes here like i can find the text and change the text to say click me Exclamation mark. And as soon as I hit enter, it updates the button. All right. Uh, I think I can change the font on it too. Let's see. Yeah. Um, right here, I'll just go font and click here on the ellipsis here to bring up the dialogue. And I'm going to go with a larger font. Okay. I'm going to go with Roboto just because I like the name of it mostly. Yeah. There we go. So we've changed the button. And again, we can run this. And now we get some bigger Roboto text. Yes, bigger Roboto text. All right. Exactly. Um, so there's a number of properties you can change here around the button. Uh, we change the size through the design surface. We can also come here and change the height and width as well. You notice a number of places have this platform default property mm -hmm. here. And what that means is that the um, when you change, when you target different platforms, it'll automatically change those properties to be the platform default. Mm. So if you're running a uh, running it on Windows, for example, it'll say, oh, Windows, a button is by default this width and height. Okay. And it'll change it. And then when you run it on Android, it'll change it to be the platform default for that platform as well. Ah, okay. So but you, so the cool thing is, is I can use platform default and say, hey, you smart style system, take care of this for me. Or I can say, no, no, I'm going to be the designer and take my artistic privilege to change the size of this however I want to. All right. So you can go either way. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting thing there. Oh, this is kind of cool. I don't know why you do this, but you can totally go rotation angle 45 degrees and make a 45 degree <laughs> angle button. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you need to have a button that's not quite square, right? Yeah, it's just just in case. <laughs> just in case. Uh, you can change the opacity of the button here. We can say 0 0.5. It's a floating point, so see now it's yeah. kind of transparent, which isn't that interesting, I guess, on a button. But what else can we do here? It's interesting. There's a lot of things you can change here, as you can see. Um... Oh, actually, we'll set it to default. What default means is that if you're anywhere on the form and you hit enter, the default button gets that as a click event. Ah, okay. All right. Um, also, you can do cancel. Cancel is if you hit the escape key, then the button gets the event. Ah, so like um, most of the time, like the little X button on like anything, any sort of application right. you're using is the cancel. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Especially like dialogues that pop up, you know? Yeah. And you can hit enter is okay and escape is cancel. Yeah. That does that for you. All right. 
Usually you won't set the same button to be both escape, default, and cancel, but you could if you really wanted to. Hey, April Fool's, <laughs> <That's> you know. <laughs> right. um, okay, so let's go ahead and put a couple other controls down here and do something interesting with these here. So I'm going to put down an edit box, which is right here. It's in the standard group. It's called edit. Mm-hmm. And this is a box you would type some text into. We'll put down a label, which we're going to use to label that edit box, give it a message that goes with it. And we'll put down a list box. Uh, list box is a, a box that contains a list of things. Okay. You know, described. Yeah. Descriptively. Named descriptively. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can drag these around. I can also lasso these and let's pull these over here. And um, actually, I can go here and say position, align, and we'll say left sides. And recent oh. align a little something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So on this label here. Let's say, uh, we'll give it a text property right here. Text. Yeah. And we'll say, to do, colon. All right. All right. So we're making a to-do list? Making a to-do list, yeah. Okay. So this edit box, um, I'm going to put two edit boxes here. I have that wrist brace on, so my... Mouse movements are a little erratic here. Mm. <laughs> uh, so let's do up here. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to copy this one. Control C and then paste it here. Control V. There we go. And then this one, we're going to say uh, text who. Oh, okay. So are we going to like make a... Are there going to be two columns in the list box? Not nah, for right now, I just thought we'd just combine it into one item. Oh, uh, yeah. But you could certainly do two odd columns, or you could do like a hierarchical view where you have everything that belongs to one person and everything that belongs to another person. Oh, really? Those are other options as well. But uh, for simplicity right now, I'm just going to combine them into one row. And so it's going to okay. have a person's name and then what they're supposed to do after it. All right. Okay. So to do this, we have to give some actions. So right now in this object inspector, we have properties, and these change the uh, appearance and such. But then under events is where we can put custom behavior on certain things. Okay. All right. Um, also, I need to point out that these each of these have a name. Yeah. So this guy is named edit one. We see right there. And we can change that name. Come down here to name. And we can say edit uh, task. Okay. All right. And this one will change, give it a name of edit um, who. Okay. All right. By convention, um, we perfectly will prefix components with what they are yeah. and then their purpose. So that way, you know, if you have like a to-do label and a to-do edit and like a to-do list, that way each of them, that little keyword helps you identify what it is on the form? Exactly. Yep. All right. Um, I've seen some people that do it the reverse, and so they'll say uh, who edit instead of edit who. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, you just need to have a, me a method that works for you yeah. and be consistent in that. Okay. Um, but there's nothing that says you can't start a new project and choose a different methodology and to see if that works better for you. Okay. All right? So now we're going to put an event handler on this. But oh, let's give the list box a name as well. So it's default. The default name, you'll notice, is the what it is, which is a list box, followed by a number. And so this was edit one, edit two. If I put another list box down, it'd be list box two. Okay. Um. And then also, actually, I'll mention this as well. It's T list box. T is short for type. Yeah. It's a convention that's been around for a long time that um, op components start with T just to say that they're of type T. And okay. So that way, if you have a something called list box, it doesn't conflict with its type of list box. So that uh, allows those two things to be named differently. Okay. Uh, so we'll just call this, uh, actually, I'll call it list to do okay all right so um, i didn't i guess i kind of didn't go with the same convention because I, <laughs> I didn't give it the full name but anyway I, for to me that makes sense and that's the purpose there yeah so now we go to this click this button here and i'm not going to bother naming the button because i'm not referencing the button in code okay and that's kind of my rule of thumb is if i'm going to reference a component in code then i give it a name yeah if i'm not going to reference the component in code like this label or this button yeah. Then I don't bother naming it. Mm. So we'll go here to the events tab. Now these events are all the events we can do. 
Uh, we can do double click or we're just going to do click right now. And the easiest way to do this, if I double click right here, then it brings me into the code editor. And I can do, okay, where's the button? Hmm? Okay, I'll edit that out, and then you're gone. So let's make this a little bigger so it's easier to see the code. Properties. There's actually a keyboard shortcut for uh, source color display. Yeah. Which make this. Oh. See, I reinstalled the new, ver the new version here, and I didn't come in and change my configuration. Let's go with a 14. There we go. All so right. That's a little easier to read for everybody. So, um, when you come in, it's going to be like this, and let's go ahead and put two spaces in here, just again by convention. Makes your code easier to read if you kind of structure it a little bit. And we're going to take what you put in the edit box and add it to the list. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just start with just the the, the task that we have. So we're going to say uh, list, and I'm going to use the control space bar. Excuse me. Use control space bar, and that brings up a list of everything that I can access that matches what I've typed so far. Okay. All right. So now, just to kind of explain this here, if I backspace, this is everything that's available. And I'll say, oh, right. well, everything that starts with an L, I, and see the lists keep getting shorter and shorter. And so there's list to do, which is a T list box. Okay. And that's what I want. So I can hit enter, or I can double click on it, or I can keep typing. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter, and it selects it. And now, so I've referenced that object, that component, the TList box component, mm -hmm. and now I want to reference a member of that component. And, and how I, do you do that? I do that by pressing the period key. Oops, I moved my mouse. Don't move your mouse. Right there, period key. All right. And this brings up the list again of all the properties and methods, all the members of that. So this is like a, a different list that's dependent upon what you selected from the first list? Yes, exactly. All right. So these, these are all the things that are part of list to do, that, t that list box. Mm -hmm. that I can interact with. So cool. it changed the scope, if you will. Okay. All right? So it has an items, and items are all the items in the list box. Yeah. Okay? And so again, I'm going to select that, and I hit period, and now I'm going to say add. Oops. It helps if I don't hit the wrong key. Add, and then now I'm going to tell it what to add. Okay. Okay, so the syntax here is we have the name of the identifier... And then mm -hmm. a dot, which says a member of that, another identifier, and a dot, another identifier. And then the parentheses are where you pass in the parameters or arguments to this uh, procedure here, this function, this method. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, next is deciding what we put in the parentheses, right? Yeah. So now we got to say we want to put in the parentheses. And so we want to add in that list box, or the edit box, right? The, yeah. The task, the edit task yeah. box. So we're going to say edit task. So that, actually, I want to point out something out. See, it says it's expecting a string here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to type edit. And I'm going to hit control space bar again to bring up that list. And so I have edit task, which is a T edit. So I'm just going to mouse down, hit that, select that, and hit enter. Now edit. No edit task. Okay, there we go. That one's what I want. <laughs> uh, edit task is a T edit. Now it's mm -hmm. expecting a string here. So that won't work because string and a T edit are two different yeah, things. Yeah, that, that's that's like code, and it's expecting you to put in words. It's sort of, kind of, yeah. It, yeah. Edit task is the object, is the component. Yeah, and it's expecting a string, which is text. Okay. All right. So I can hit period on this, and these are all the members of edit task, all the properties of edit task. Mm -hmm. And there is one called text, and you notice text is of type string. Okay. And string matches string. Ah. See? So that's what it's looking for there. And so I just put that there. And then at the end of your statement, each statement you want to put a semicolon. Yeah. Okay? So there we go. We've made it so we can add items to our list. And so we're going to run this. And to do item, our task is um, make a list. And we click me, and we add it to the list there. Huh. Okay? So that's kind of... All right, yeah. This is the minimum level of functionality. Yes. <laughs> uh, some other things, maybe we want to be able to delete this, and of course we need to be able to assign who is assigned to what, right? Okay. So to do that, to do the who is assigned to what, we're going to come here, and... I don't know what I did there. All right. 
we'll edit that part out with the little microphone showing. <laughs> okay, so in here we're going to come in and we're going to um, add another thing here. We're going to say edit, and then I'm going to use control space, edit who dot text, and we're going to concatenate that together. We're going to do that with the plus operator. All right. And then we're going to put a little uh, colon in here like this. All right, so that's gonna get. Uh, what, you see what's gonna happen there? Yeah, so it's like uh, this is this is the code telling it to grab whatever's in the who box, right? Right, and then after that, put a colon and then a space, and then after that, grab whatever in, whatever's in the uh, the task box and put that there. So if we put in, you know, say uh, George, let's, let's run it. Yeah. So who is George? Yeah. And if we tell do, George to do the dishes, and we click that, it'll, yeah. So see, we got the uh, colon there, dishes. And I think that's kind of interesting that we have to put in the spaces like that, you know? Like, if, if we don't tell the computer to put in a space, then it doesn't know what we're trying to do, so we, we've got to make sure that we're a little specific. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that's real important, is you got to be very explicit with the computer, because it doesn't know what you're trying to accomplish necessarily. Yeah. Um, so you have to be very explicit. You say, hey, I want a space in here. If you don't put a space there, it's not going to put a space there. <laughs> okay. And I think that's good. It it's kind of goes back to that platform default versus specifying your own thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I talked about with the sizes. Yeah. Is you want to be able to have the control you need. So there are other things you can do where you can say, hey, like put these words together automatically and it'll, yeah. it won't assume anything, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it's important that you have ultimate control of what happens, which yes. I like. Okay, so now we have the who, and so now we need to be able to delete things from the list. Um, down here at the bottom, I can switch between the design view, which is where we were before, and the code view. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I'll point this out here. In the code view, there's a lot of other code here. We didn't yeah. write this, did we? <laughs> no, I, didn't, I did not see that earlier. Uh, this code is automatically made by the IDE for us. Oh, really? Yes. So, so we, we're, we've transcended the level of writing the basic code now, and the code will write its own code. Yes. And we just have to write the superior code. Exactly. <laughs> we, we fill in the details, fill in the blanks. It's kind of like Mad Libs, right? So yeah, we just fill in the, the gaps. So you'll notice this is the only line of code we wrote right here was this one right here. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it was written for us. Now, a couple things I'll point out is you'll notice here's the name of all those items we had, right? Yeah. And so it gave them, here's the name we gave it, list to do, edit who, yeah. edit task. Button one, we didn't rename, so it's still using the default name of button one. Okay. All right. So we're going to add another event handler in here. So we're going to go to the, the list box, and we're going to put a, we're going to go to the item click event. Okay. Oh, yeah. So item click event only happens when you click on an item in the list box, whereas the click event will happen mm. anytime you click in the list box. Okay. Okay. And actually, one thing I want to point out is that, um, we're building this on Windows, but we could just as easily make this for iPhone, Android, etc. Yeah. On Android and iPhone, you don't have a click, yeah, you know, a touch, but Wait. it maps to the same event. Oh, all right. So uh -huh. we don't have to create a separate click touch. No. All right. <laughs> that would just be silly. <laughs> it's the same. Basically, it's when the pointing device goes here. All right. Do this. Okay. Right? And on iPhone and iOS or iPhone and Android, the pointing device is your finger. <laughs> when the finger touches the screen here, that's a click. All right. And so it, it makes that simpler for you, yes. Okay, so we're going to do item click. Mm-hmm. And I'll scroll up here so you can see what happens. It automatically created this a list to do item click yeah. procedure here. And we're going to write some code in here in between the begin and end. And that's kind of the syntax. You have these yeah. blocks of code between that start with the begin and end with an end. So that's what these uh, these pink lines are here that is in, uh, right between the begin and the end like that? Yes. And so those actually are showing, yeah, those little pink lines show a block of code are attached to each other. All right. Okay. And you'll notice also like when you have like, a, see how it highlighted those parentheses? Mm -hmm. It does things like that to show you. Help you keep track of where Help everything you keep track is. Of where, yeah. yeah, yeah, just like it, if you've done like any complicated math and you have like nested parentheses. Oh yeah, you can do that here too, and it can get a little compl confusing sometimes. So those little structural highlightings are useful. All right. Um. So yeah, it it uh, you have two. There's two parts here. There's the interface section and the implementation section. Mm -hmm. In the interface section, you'll notice it created a list to do item up here, and then it created another one down here at the bottom. Implementation. Yeah. So, uh, this this is kind of the 
the index of your book, if you will. Yes. And this is the ch- individual chapters of the book. Okay. If you could think of it so, that way. So, like, at, up at the top, it's like, it's telling you what each term means. So, yep. it's saying, edit task is what the fleshy human has called my T-edit box. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So, like, this is the list of characters and who they are. You know, uh, Gimli the dwarf, in this case, edit task, the T-edit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they go on a quest, you know, mm-hmm. and here's where the quest happens. You know, right. kind of like that. All right, but again, this is stuff that the editor all manages a lot of the stuff for you. Okay. All right, so now we're going to come out here and we're going to add some more codes. We're going to say list to do, which is our list box. Okay. And we're going to say items dot delete because we want to delete an item now. Yes. And it's looking for an index. And now we need to tell it which item to delete. Yeah. Now, it just so happens because we used the item click event handler. Can we say something like what I clicked earlier? Right here, see, it tells us this is the item you just clicked. Ah. So that's being passed into us as a parameter. So this is it kind of saying, this is something that's kind of called out in this block of code. Yes. That, is, that makes this block of code special. Exactly. It's not just a normal beginning and end. It has this, uh, what, it, what it consists of, I yep, think. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So these are passed to us. So we have these here. So item only exists inside this beginning block right here. All right. And so I can say item... And item has a, and actually, if I do this and say item, you see item is a t-list box item, t-list box item. Yes. So we want, we need an index, which is an integer. So we can say item dot index integer. Hmm. There we go. And it'll just, that that does it? That does it. That, that's it? That's it. <laughs> I know, crazy, huh? Wow. All right. So to do, we're going to say uh, delete an item. Who is assigned this? Jim. Click me. We'll put it a few times in here, and I'll just go boop, 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 boop. So wow. Delete. We'll say uh, delete item one, two, three. And so I can delete an individual item here by just clicking on it. So mm-hmm. you can see that it actually deleted that selected item. Yeah. So there you go. That's kind of the basic functionality of a little to-do list app. That's cool. Yeah. Pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing that we got to do, just because it's cool. And there's there's so many things that Delphi just makes really, really easy to do. Yeah. And so one of the things that makes it really easy to do is to make it look kind of fancier. Okay. And how does it do that? So we have this idea called style uh, styles. Style. So we just grab this style book object here. Yeah. And put it on the form. And first of all, this is a not, it's called a non-visual component. So you notice it just, this is a little square. Yeah. I can't make it any bigger. It's always going to be a little square. So it's a non-visual okay. component. Um, so does that mean like it won't show up on the final product? Right. So when I hit run, ah, the box is gone. Yeah. And something that's kind of cool actually is you can hide all your non-visual components of this button right here. Yeah. And make them go away and bring them back. Oh. So you can preview it. Because occasionally in some projects you're going to get a lot of these components all over the place and it yeah. makes it hard to see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so this makes it easy to just hide them all. Okay. Um, okay, so the style book, first thing we got to do is on the form, there's a property called style book right here. Yeah. And we just got to assign it to that style book. Okay. And so that says the form style book is style book one. Okay. And now what we can do is we can go into the style book. I'm going to double click on him. And we're going to open a style. Now, styles are a way to um, give it a look really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the wrong folder. Styles. So the the path where we are is users, public, uh, documents, Embarcadero Studio 19 styles. And you get to this folder here, and this is a list of all the styles that come with it. And I'm going to show you my favorite style, but you can certainly come in and experiment and try some different ones if you want. Mm -hmm. My favorite style is called transparent here. So I just can hit open, and it opens that style up. And then there's actually a number of objects here. You can come in and edit these and do all sorts of cool stuff. This is very, very, very flexible. So you can port in like an existing style and then like edit it just slightly to make it, you know, your own sort of custom. Exactly. exactly. Right. This is really very powerful, but we're just, um, just using the basics of it. And then I close this view here, this style view and it says apply. And I say, yes. And there we go. It's apply. Wow. That style. Isn't that cool? Like just, just <laughs> like that, just like that. And so, and there's a bunch of different styles, and there's other ones you can get from elsewhere. There's third parties make these styles as well. 
so you can and then like you said you can edit these you can load them up in photoshop and make changes to them too wow and so and the cool thing is is this is uh like i said that was really easy we just saw this was really easy mm-hmm. but now it went from looking like every other windows app out there to pretty dang fancy looking windows app yeah <laughs> our, our to-do list went from make sure to pick up eggs to take over all of tron yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> yep so there you go We've uh, made a little simple to, simple to do app. Oh, we didn't save it yet, so let's go ahead and save this. Um, so I'm gonna make you always. I generally make a new folder when I'm making a project that's actually useful. Mm-hmm. Just call this uh, my to do app. So the folder could be whatever name you want it to be. Yeah. And then there's uh, when you make your first app, there's going to be at least two files that you're going to save. Okay. And the first file we're saving it says right here it says it's a unit. Okay? Yeah. And the unit is uh, the chunk of code in the application. So there's the application itself, which is the project. Yeah. And then the code within it. Okay. So the uh, this is the project part, right? This is the part that you would open up in order to... It's actually the, the unit. So if we look over here on the project manager, see project 31 is the project we're creating, and it yes. cre- cre- contains unit 34. Okay. So the unit is... A project can contain multiple units. Okay. All right. So each unit represents a different uh, chunk of functionality or a different screen within the overall application. Okay. All right. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to give it the na- the unit a name. It always asks that first. So we can call it like main unit or that's a good, let's do that main unit and we'll hit save on that one. Okay. So you'll notice over here it renamed it. Oops, I can't expand that. And then we'll call this, this is the name of our application, the name of our project itself. So we'll call this uh, My To Do App. Ah, so this this is the project as a whole. Yeah. The unit is its is one of the chunks of code that it loads, you know, and then in this case we only have one, but this is the, this part here is the actual full project. Exactly. This is the project. And so okay. we hit save. And now over here we can see this, My To Do App contains main unit. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's all saved now. We can um, run this, and we could actually take that executable and give it to somebody else, and they can run it on their Windows computer. Really? Yep, that easily. Done already? We're done. We could just put it on a USB drive. Exactly. Send it in an email. Yep. And then uh, if you have the full version of uh, Delphi or Red Studio, you can target all these different devices, Android, OS X, um, iOS, etc. So yeah. those are all available as well. But we're not going to really get into that today. Just know that's something you can do later on. All right. Okay. Any questions? Um, how much effort does it take to port it over to a different platform? <laughs> um, so it, it really, all you have to do is select the platform. You have to be set up to target different platforms. Yeah. And, um, that's it. We're done. It's going to go to a different platform. Really? Yeah. If I, if, if I had set up my Mac to, so you have to actually have a Mac set up to deploy it to. Yeah. Which involves a couple steps, which we'll cover later. Okay. But this would actually de- deploy it to that. Now, remember I talked to you about that platform default property? Yes. So there's a number of other places we haven't changed things that are going to default to that platform default behavior. Ah, yeah. And so that means it will know how to look and behave differently on a Mac versus Windows. Oh, yeah, because like the, uh, the X in the corner changes depending yep. on where it is and stuff. So it'll do that for you? Yep, exactly. Uh, a big example of that is tabs. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a tab control over here, which we'll look at another time. Yeah. But on iOS, the tabs have to be on the top. Apple says tabs go on the top. Yeah. Or no, iOS says tabs go on the bottom. Sorry. Oh. And Android says tabs go on the top. Huh. And it automatically switches those. But really? You, yeah, it does. But the, you can, of course, override that if you're like, I always want my tabs to be on the top at the bottom. You can override yeah. that. But by default, it will automatically change that behavior. Wow. Yep. That is awesome. Yeah. So... Uh, and that's all. All that's necessary is to be set up to deploy the different platforms. You select the platform you want to deploy to, and uh, you can preview it on different styles platforms here as well. Um, and it goes. It just deploys it. There's some things you might have to make subtle changes to, but generally speaking, it just works. Wow. Yep. Any other questions? No, I think that's it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for uh, working with me to write your first Delphi application. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely.